new bombshell public filing alleges financial and sexual impropriety by Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, the lawyer responsible for prosecuting former President Donald Trump's Georgia election interference case. Now, the filing alleges that another prosecutor in the Trump case named Nathan Wade paid for lavish vacations that he took with Willis using Fulton County funds that his law firm received from the DA's office. County records show that Wade has received nearly $654,000 in legal fees since January 2022, authorized by Willis. Here's a bit more reporting from Fox News. The sex scandal is rocking President Trump's case in Georgia. The Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney, Fannie Willis, has been accused of appointing her lover as a special prosecutor in the case against Donald Trump. DA Fannie Willis is responsible for taking Trump's mugshot, also allegedly financially benefited from hiring her lover, Nathan Wade, on that Trump case. This is according to a motion that was just filed by Wade, the co-defendant. Now, who is this romantic partner who Fannie Willis hired? He was just a private attorney who's never even tried a felony case. Even the Times says he has, quote, limited experience trying high-profile cases. But get this. Fannie's alleged lover has been paid nearly a million dollars in legal fees already. The motion was filed on behalf of former Trump campaign official Michael Roman, who's looking to get his charges dismissed, and for Willis, Wade, and the entire DA's office to be disqualified from further prosecution of the case. Willis's office has denied all wrongdoing. That hasn't stopped Republicans from trying to spin gold from the drama. Senator Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee took it a step farther and alleged the Biden White House was even involved. She posted a copy of the alleged invoices on X, writing Fannie Willis's alleged romantic partner slash special prosecutor coordinated with the White House while building the political prosecution of Donald Trump, all on the taxpayer dime. See for yourself. The invoices show Wade's office met with the White House on two occasions, once in May of 2022 and then in November of 2022. Uh, so Jesse Waters there is correct. I looked up this New York Times story and it does begin that it seemed an unusual choice when Willis um, hired uh, this Nathan Wade figure. Um, other news sources um, that I have looked at, you know, just news reporters have you know, seems to suggest that there is probably some merit to the, that there's a romance between these two figures. Um, so that's, that, that's not just some like wild um, um, libel being practiced here. Um, so, so it is potentially, I think, an ethical matter. Um, in fact, uh, it, it says that Fonnie Willis was served um, papers by Nathan Wade's wife, who he's going through a divorce proceeding with, and she's been asked to subpoena, she's been subpoenaed to participate in that legal action. So clearly something is going on here, and we're going to find out whether there was, in fact, some ethical violation of her choosing um, this person that she appears to be involved in. Now, whether that means these cases all get thrown out or it helps the legal defense of Trump or anyone else very much remains to be seen. Yeah, that's but, very um, much wishful thinking. But there thinking. is a, <laughs> yeah, but there's a, there is a there there to the, to, to what they're raising. Yeah. So the allegation uh, is that uh, Willis has benefited personally from uh, the, not only just his salary, which I, I think that making salary determinations, you have to just look at what the going rate is. People are often shocked and dismayed by legal salaries, but a high profile case, I don't think the issue is his, his raw salary, but the allegation that they're making is that because they are alleged to have gone on trips together that he paid for, that that constitutes a kind of a kickback. My bigger concern is that she seems to have hired someone for a very important high-profile case that seems to be not especially qualified. And frankly, this might be a boon if, if the result is that he is no longer a part of this case and instead of him, someone who is much more qualified to prosecute the case is actually brought in in his stead. Yeah, she uh, apparently described him as a trusted friend and mentor in 2022 mm -hmm. and that he was willing to take the job and more seasoned prosecutors we're not, but again, this is why there have to be careful ethics around romantic entanglements because one's judgment in who is the most qualified or who is the best fit for a job can be very much affected by having an amorous engagement with right. that person. Now, the uh, filing here uh, accuses them of having gone on multiple cruises together and other trips that he paid for. It's worth noting that those claims were not substantiated in the filings, um, but, uh, you know, 
that mm -hmm. that is ostensibly uh, forthcoming. Um, Willis has declined uh, through a, a spokesperson to comment on this for this Washington Post reporting, at least. Um, but it is also interesting, as you alluded to, to note that some of this information came out because of um, fi uh, divorce filings uh, between Wade and his estranged wife. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly this development might not um, end up ultimately hurting the case against the Trump or anyone else very much, but it, it certainly doesn't. It certainly is not good for the prosecutors. No, it's embarrassing. Um, it is embarrassing. How Democrats They're going could to let have this to, happen, yeah. given the like political investment they have in this case, in the Georgia case specifically, because that's the case that even if Trump wins, the most he solid can't case. dismiss. And um, it is it's not a federal right. case. And it's in some ways the case they're going to co over. compile the most evidence for because of because of they charge so many people, many of whom have already provided testimony against Donald Trump. So it is interesting. I mean, this guy is going to end up. I'm going to predict it right now, be becoming not involved with the case anymore. Uh, it's it's going to get handed off to someone else. And that, you know, whenever you do a move like that, there's always, you're, you're, I mean, you're harming your own case. You've already showed your cards in some ways. Um, the new person is going to be under a cloud of scrutiny, is going to have to play catch up. So, um, yeah, this, this was a, a mild bit of good news for, uh, for Donald Trump and uh, everyone else being charged. Yeah, it's really embarrassing. Democrats are not... They cannot simultaneously frame the stakes of this election as being about democracy and focusing on how important these lawsuits are, and also let them falter in these completely right. predictable and unavoidable say, ways. You know who would be the best person for this case? My new boyfriend. It's, it's all, I'm sorry. It's outrageous. <laughs> With all of the relevance, all of the importance, the crucial nature of this thing, to have allowed Willis to put forward that excuse in the first place that more qualified prosecutors weren't willing to take this case. We're, you're expected to believe United States of America, with its 330-odd million people, that there wasn't a single prosecutor. This isn't like Donald Trump Ruli Giuliani or some of these people who have been accused of criminal wrongdoing, not being able to find uh, prosecutors, uh, uh, lawyers for their own cases, people who have failed to pay lawyers in the past, having trouble getting sure. lawyers to represent them. This is a high-profile prosecution of the former president of the United States, where there is a plethora of evidence that demonstrates that, at very least, he leaned on people like Raffensperger to, quote, find the votes. This was a substantial, meaty prosecution that I imagine thousands of highly qualified prosecutors would have, would have been champing mm -hmm. at the bent, be, uh, bit to take on, and that there was not more scrutiny when Willis put, to, put forward the excuse that I hired my longtime friend and mentor who has no experience in prosecuting cases, much less these kinds of cases, because no one else in the United States of America would take it on. My goodness. We just did a segment talking about the Biden administration being asleep at the wheel. This is more evidence that the Democrats are, frankly, just adrift. Well. I totally agree. You know, it's interesting always what stories of this nature get noticed or picked up by mainstream media. So it's being covered now because there's a court filing about it that the, the Trump people discovered it and uh, the Michael Roman and is using this um, in the case. You know, there's been a lot of reporting on Fonnie Willis. She's been subject to a lot of media scrutiny. There's been a lot of profiles of her. Some of which I would note is, I think, not legitimate and in very much in bad faith. What do you mean? Some of the profiles of her. Um, there, ha As you point out, there has been a practice of, for example, uh, when there, I've noticed when uh, the Post or some other right-leaning um, um, outlets do a profile on someone who the audience, the conservative leading, you know, a liberal leading person that a conservative leading audience is not going to like. You can't say in the in the meat of the text anymore. This person is black because what relevance is that to the case? But there's inevitably a photograph of them. Inevitably, if the person involved is is a black person, the same thing was done in a recent New York Times article where they were talking about the Harvard board uh, in the Claudine Gay fiasco. One of the board members is Ken Chenault. He was alluded to as a former CEO of American Express, but the implication isn't necessarily from his name or his position that you would expect him to be black. He was the one member of the board that was pictured in the mm -hmm. New York Times article. So there, I, I, th I do think there has been an undue kind of focus on the credibility, the um, uh, uh, eligibility of certain members that are involved in this prosecution that is perhaps driven by factors that aren't their actual behavior. Well, this is not one of them. Yeah, what, what I meant was it is perhaps just notable that in all of the scrutiny and profiling of this 
person, there was not enough, it was not discovered that she's going on dates, so she's going on cruises with the guy she picked to be the prosecutor. Yeah, but I completely accept that. Maybe that's not that. discoverable, but I don't know. I, I, I accept that, but for me, the problem is the much more serious problem. The red flag should have been that someone who had no experience in this matter right. was put in this position. And, and we, something that we haven't right. and, said and then before. You might, and, and then you might expect, like, And again, then you look, ask why. Right. Then, then, then all of this right. should, that's why I'm saying and, it's the red, yeah. it should have been the red and flag. And none of that came out. The mainstream media didn't do any, no, no media organization did any of that work. Odd. That's yeah. All. And Odd. to be clear, the whole point of a special prosecutor is to have someone with some independence from the rest of the prosecutor's office. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's not a conflict of interest. So this is a significant problem. It is a significant problem. And hopefully, I think the silver lining on this for Democrats should be that you actually have an opportunity now to get someone in here who knows better what they're doing. More rising right after this.